Hi. I think I'm by myself still. Hello. It's time for 2 p.m. Citizen Science. Woo! Let's see if I can't get my comment section pulled up here. I'm trying to be real fancy about the technology today, so we'll see how well that works out. We'll see. Hello, everyone. <laughs> hi, hi. As you can see, I'm joining you from underwater. Ooh, yes, so fancy. We are underwater right now. Hi, people. Welcome. Welcome to the party. <laughs> We're going to have a good coral party today. It's going to get awesome. I'm super, super fond of corals, too, so you have a Big old coral nerd teaching you about this today. It's gonna to be short, just another citizen science vid. 10, 15 minutes, something like that. You're gonna be asking me questions for three years though, because this is so fun, this coral stuff. Hmm. We shall see. Hi everyone. We'll give a couple people a few more minutes to join in. Get on this coral bandwagon of ours. Have you guys been to a reef before? Let me know. Comment for me. Have you been to a coral reef before? I'm at one right now. <laughs> no, so I'm clearly not underwater, actually. I am on Marine Lab campus, but this is a real picture of our reefs down here in the Keys. We went out at some point and took it. I'm not sure who took this picture. I'm not sure what reef it's from, but I know this is a Florida reef. I would recognize it anywhere. We've got a lot of stuff going on. There's some fire coral above me right there. Ow, it's on my head. There's a lot of gorgonians, some sea fans over here. Some pretty, pretty stuff. Just a few times. <laughs> I wish I could have joined you guys from actually underwater or actually on a boat out at the reef, but I don't think service is cool. Oh dear. Am I okay? I think I just stuttered for a minute. Am I still here? Hopefully. I want to know if you guys have been to a reef also that's not here in the Florida Keys. Perhaps you've been to Australia, the largest barrier reef in the world. Perhaps you've been to Belize, the second largest barrier reef in the world. This, the Florida Keys reef track, that's the third largest barrier reef in the world, which is pretty cool. Ocean Studies! Hi guys! You guys are awesome. Got some friends popping in. Hi friends, long time no see. I can tell you guys are here for the coral one, of course. All right, you guys, let's get started because I don't want to keep you here for too, too long, but I do want to talk as much as I can about my favorite thing in the world, coral and coral reefs. So I got to try and keep it concise. Uh, today for Citizen Science Week, we are doing bleach watch and coral disease, which is very exciting. And not exciting that we have those things. Obviously, they're not good, but it's a way to get out on the reef and really make a good impact to make a big difference because the data that we collect through this Citizen Science in particular goes straight all the way up the ranks to the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary which if you guys are not familiar, it's run by NOAA, National Marine Sanctuary, huge, covers the entire Florida Keys and then some. And so the data that we collect helps inform the people that create the sanctuary and the rules in the sanctuary. It tells them, you know, what they need to do, more protections where they're needed, stuff like that. So super important data that we have here. There is a data sheet, which I know you guys are all excited for. Data sheet, right? It's like the best thing in the world. Love data sheets. Um, I want you guys to tell me 
in the comments, so comment for me. What is the number one thing, the number one tool we use to observe? Because that's the entire point of this citizen science. It's just observation. If you guys were with us earlier in the week, we did seagrass surveys. That's a lot of tools, a lot of you know, juggling things in the water that gets difficult. But for the bleach watch and coral disease, it's pure observation. So what tools do you have on you, probably right now, that you use to observe? Hmm, what could that be? Super key. Um, a lot of our data sheets at Marine Lab are printed on underwater paper, so that's pretty cool. All right, you get to go underwater with it. This data sheet is not, because like I keep saying, all you have to do is get in the water and observe for some things. You pop out of the water, you fill out your sheet, and you're good to go. Easy peas. Now, oh, I have a correct answer. You are absolutely right, it was Wendy. It is sight. Sight, your eyeballs. That's what you need to observe, right? Because you're not, exactly, you're not supposed to be touching stuff. So you're just supposed to get in the water. You can cross your arms in front of you where I like to put them behind my back because I'm just taking a leisurely stroll around the reef and you just gaze at everything, you take a look. So real quick, this is a plug for Anna, our data science manager, I'm not sure what your full title is. Anna's an instructor here at Marine Lab. She posted the citizen science videos earlier for you guys. She has to deal with all of the data that comes out of Marine Lab and it is a lot. It is a lot of data. So I really want to make a plug that you guys, oh, I didn't even think about it being backwards. That's a good point. Oh, it's a little late for that. Hmm. Um, anyway, I want to make a point to fill out the top parts of data sheets, the who, what, when, where, why of a data sheet. You need your name, you need the location, you need the time. The words are backwards, I understand now, but that's okay. You don't really need the words. Just keep in mind, you guys, it's so, so, so important to fill out the top part of a data sheet. Uh, Anna, our data manager, will love you forever if you can make sure to do that. Because no data is still data. We still want to know that. But without the top part filled out, mm, we can't really do anything about that. If I don't know what reef you were on, I can't do anything with the knowledge that you saw a lot of bleaching. Ugh. So make sure you fill out the top part. That's my one spiel. That one was for you, Anna. I know she'd appreciate that. The beauty of this citizen science um, thing, <laughs> the data sheet and the collecting of this data is that it's really easy. Like we talked about earlier, all you have to do is go underwater and look at stuff. It's not that hard. It's super fun. And then you can have a fun hour long snorkel and just, you know, see what you can't see. The only things that we're looking for in this specific citizen science is if there's any bleaching or if there's any disease. That's what really what we want to know. It'll list the different kinds of corals, where, what kind of bleaching or whatever you saw, but ultimately they just want to know, was there bleaching? Hmm. Was there disease? Hmm. Could be. Could be. So when you get underwater, we just want to Look, just observe. So I figured like, you know, data sheets, super important for citizen science, but that's not really the fun part. And I also wanna make sure that you guys kinda of know what I'm talking about when I use some of these terms. So we're gonna have like a little pop quiz in a second. So get your brain juices flowing. I wanna hear all of your answers. Uh, real quick, I wanna talk about bleaching, just as a super fast overview. For those of you that don't know, coral, coral, it's an animal, and inside that animal's tissue lives an algae. And when that animal gets really, really stressed out, if it's way too hot, or if it's way too cold, or whatever, that animal is stressed out, it starts to freak out, and then it goes, I can't have any house guests anymore, and it throws all the algae out. It expels all that algae. So you take a beautiful, healthy coral like this, it gets far too stressed, it throws out that uh, algae and then it turns white like the one above it. So this is a, a tiny little baby elkhorn, tiny little baby elkhorn. This one has bleached. You can see the color is gone almost over the entire thing. It's a pretty even color disruption. It's kind of how you know you're looking at bleaching. Get those brain juices flowing guys. So that's kind of how you know you're looking at bleaching. You want to look for like whiteness all over on the coral. It's generally a good way to do it. Easy piece. Um, with coral disease, there's a lot of coral diseases. There's a lot. This is five out of many. I don't know how many they are. And you're thinking, wait, Emma, there are six squares on that there thing behind you. Yes, there are. But this one, which one? This one over, this one over here is fish bites. 
So that's not a disease. That's a fish that got confused what a coral was and started to bite the animal instead of algae on the reef. Silly fish. So we're talking about diseases. With this citizen science organization or this effort, it's so nice because they break it down so simply. So you don't have to be this amazing coral scientist to go out and discover diseases on the reef. You don't have to know the tiny little intricate differences between diseases when you go out. No, all you have to know is your colors. Do you guys know your colors? Hmm. I don't know. Some of the names that I saw pop up in this chat, and it's a little questionable if you know your colors. Looking at you, Tommy. I'm just kidding, you guys. I'm sure you know your colors. But with this data sheet, they only want to know if you're looking at a black band disease or a white band disease. So you have to know the difference between black and white. Oh, it's so complicated, I know. Science, you guys. So it's really, really easy. All you have to do is uh, know the difference between black and white. That's easy. So we have our black band disease up here. You'll see the disease margin, which is the active line of the disease. It's the point at which the dead coral pretty much meets the living coral. It'll be black with a black band disease. So right up there, it's like a super deep burgundy red, almost black. That's how you know you're looking at black band disease. You got a little diseased coral right here, and you got that healthy coral over here, and that black line right in the middle tells you that you are looking at black band disease. Um, and then with white band or with white disease, excuse me, there's a lot of different diseases that could cause a coral to go white or to have white parts, and it's very, very, very difficult to determine that in in situ if you will like out on the reef and so instead this sheet is like you know what if it's diseased and it's white white disease just go for it so if you have spots or lines or what have you it's going to be some kind of white disease i do want to take a hot second and talk to you guys about stony coral tissue loss disease and i now know that this slide is backwards in the camera i did not think of that earlier i'm sorry but the words aren't important i'll say the words it's just the pictures that i want you guys to look at super key so stony coral tissue loss disease is a relatively new disease event that has been spreading throughout the florida keys and into the caribbean and it's not uncommon to have a disease event on reefs they're very resilient they'll come back but this disease is exceptionally fast moving. It's exceptionally, um, well, it's got a really high death rate for corals. It can kill them very quickly. I don't know if you guys can determine in this picture, but this coral went from on January 5th, having a little bit of disease right here, to on February 1st being over half dead. That is super, super, super fast for a coral like this one that grows two centimeters a year. It's really slow growing, so the disease is super fast. It's rushing all the way down throughout the Florida Keys. It's really scary. We got a lot of scientists in the water and a lot of scientists on land doing everything they can to try and get a hold of it. So getting out into the field and being a citizen science and reporting on this is so important when we have all those scientists doing a lot of hard work. We can at least make the observations for them that they can't take at the same time. So once it's safe out, once you can all gather back around, I want everybody down here in the Keys so we can help out do a little bleach watch and disease assessment for these good people. It's teamwork, guys, keeping this reef alive. It's gonna be teamwork. Okay, are you ready for the pop quiz? <gasps> yes, that is what we are doing now, people. I bet you didn't think you'd have a quiz going on at the same time as you were learning about citizen science, but as, as marine lab instructors, we live to surprise you. So, surprise, it's a quiz. I want you guys to tell me, this picture right behind me, is it a black band disease? A white band disease? Is it fish bites? Is it stony coral tissue loss disease? Comment for me right now. I don't know where your comments are compared to the video. So comment wherever your comments are and let me know what do you think is going on with this coral? What's going on there? You can see some of it is very light in color. So all around here, it's very light in color. That's possibly the diseased or dead portion. There's living coral right in the middle right in here. There's this very dark diseased edge. Do you guys see that? That dark diseased edge. What does that mean? What disease could that be? Hmm. I want to see those comments, people. What disease do you think that could be? Of also bonus in this picture, we've got a, uh, 
uh, what's it called, fireworm in this picture too. So if you have very keen eyes, if the video is working very well, you can actually see a little fireworm in this picture as well. So see if you can't see him, he's being very sneaky. So remember guys, that living, or sorry, the dead corals over here, it's just sad looking, that algae's not part of it. There's some like stuff growing on top of it. Now it's weird, you got the very dark disease edge, dark disease edge, and then your healthy coral right in the middle. Hmm. I'm gonna give you guys time to think, don't you worry. The fireworm for those curious is right there. Can you see it? I feel like a weatherman when I do this, is it working? <laughs> It is, in fact, a black band disease. So that's what I was talking about with that dark edge to the disease. Not sure if that picture comes across very well, but definitely a black band disease. So good job, good job. Your next one, if it'll click. <gasps> okay, the next one. Hmm, what's going on here? I wonder. It's almost like this entire coral, this entire coral is really pale almost. All the colors kind of left it. Maybe all the algae left it. I don't know. What do you think went wrong? This one's really interesting because yes, a lot of it is super, super light, but you can see a little bit of color. Maybe it looks like, like a old coffee stain kind of in this area. Just a little bit of color in there still. Just a tiny bit. What do you think is happening to this poor coral? It's a big brain coral. You gotta see those guys alive. They're so cool. Yes, good job, you guys. It is in fact coral bleaching. It's a very advanced stage of coral bleaching because the whole thing is white. Now that weird coffee color stain that I, there's two different ways to point. That weird coffee color stain that I was pointing out to you, there is a little bit of algae on that coral still left over, but for the most part, this coral is bleached. So sad. That doesn't mean dead, it just means bleached. And we can get into that whole spiel later if you guys want. I can talk about this until the cows come home. I'll talk about it forever. Ha 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 ha, Jack. All right, you guys, which one is this? So, a lot of white, but what is that green thing on top? What do you think? What could that green thing be? I don't think the corals are listening to news briefings. I don't think they're the ones drinking the bleach. <laughs> I know nobody nobody ingests bleach bad but what do you think's going on with this coral here hmm 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 yeah I think for the zoom on a non Mac it's like actually I have a keyboard here for you control plus sign maybe I don't know something like that alt plus sign something so on this coral here, this is what we would consider to be a white band disease. And it's tricky, and that's why I wanted to show you guys pictures and have you look at, um, or like get an eye for what you're looking at. So if you go out to the reef, you have a little bit of a better idea what's going on. So it is a white band disease. You can tell because, well, there is a disease margin, right? You can tell that it kind of maybe started off at the bottom and is wrapping around the coral. So we just have a little bit of living tissue left at the top. And then since there's no black line or that deep, deep burgundy line there, it's just like a white edge right around it. That's how you know it's a white disease. I'll tell you most of the time, especially with coral, when in doubt, white disease. There's so many different diseases, like I said, that can infect the corals, but a lot of those are white in nature. So especially when it comes to this citizen science spiel, when in doubt, white disease, most likely. Most likely. All right, and this one's a fun one for you guys. This is what fish, fish bites look like, excuse me. If you look at it and you go, hmm, it looks like something nibbled at it. It's probably because something nibbled at it. So you can see the little mouthpieces from all the little fish coming over and chomping on this big boulder coral over here. Silly fish, that's not algae. You can't eat the algae in that coral. That's an animal layoff. There's a lot of different reasons fish may go after um, corals, may bite them, but ultimately it's not usually in their 
wheelhouse in what they eat, in their diet, that's the word. Usually it's not in their diet. That's of course um, an exception for some fish, but most of the fish don't really want to eat coral. It's not going to have the nutrients that they need. So little tiny fish bites here for you guys. All right, I hope you feel a little more confident about what you're looking at. I hope you know what bleaching is a little bit now. I hope you're getting a little inspired to go out to the reef to try and do some citizen science outside with us. It's a great way to social distance, just get out onto the water and drive. I know a lot of people have, um, obviously, I mean, I'm lucky I can get out to the reef, so a lot of people can't, but even just getting out in your own backyard doing some kind of citizen science could not only be really awesome for you, but really awesome for the scientists that need that data as well. Every little part helps. Um, I am going to hang on for a minute to answer some questions if you guys have them. Let me know. Like I said, big old coral nerd, so if you have any coral question, let me know. I want to make a pitch for the citizen science video tomorrow. It's going to be on harmful algal blooms. Like if you guys have ever heard of a red tide before, we're going to talk about that tomorrow with instructor Pat. So that is going to be super fun. Anybody that lives in Florida should know about harmful algal blooms because it does affect us quite a bit down here. Anybody all across the nation should know about harmful algal blooms because they can start anywhere and they can have some really, really big impacts. So keep your eyes out for that. That's going to be shockingly enough again at 2 p.m. tomorrow with instructor Pat. So like I said, if you guys have questions, drop them here. Other than that, thanks for joining me. I hope you have a better idea about coral bleaching and uh, coral diseases now. Let's see. Ooh, how often do we collect data on coral disease and bleach watch? <sighs> hmm. It's mostly group dependent. I may have mentioned that earlier. It's not something that the instructors will go out and do too, too much on their very own. We definitely want groups to come out and do it with us. Luckily, we have a bunch of groups that come down to Marine Lab that do want just that little bit extra to their snorkel out at the reef. And so we'll just tack on a bleach watch. Like you guys just saw, it's pretty easy to get the grasp of the citizen science. So it's an awesome thing to do with a bunch of students from a wide variety of ages here at Marine Lab so we can get out on the water. Plus, who doesn't love running around on the coral reef, right? Maybe you can get even a second reef trip in if you do the, uh, do the bleach watch trip. Thanks, Jack. Have fun in California. All right, you guys. Well, I hope you had fun. Join us tomorrow for the harmful algal blooms and then keep your eye out for coming at you all month of May, probably even a little longer than that because we got so much, so much science boiling in our heads, we just need to get it out somehow. Information to attend a trip will probably be on our website. So that's marinelab.org. Go into there, that has links to the virtual website which has um, different accoutrement, if you will, to our virtual lessons, uh, handouts, pamphlets, other lessons that we've done. Um, that'll link you on the virtual site. And then on the normal site, marinelab.org, that will give all the information about attending a trip. Absolutely all of it. It's a little squirrely right now, obviously, because we're waiting for schools to open up before we can do much. But by all means, get in there early because next year and in the fall, hopefully, everybody's coming to see us. That's what I want. I want everybody to come see us. Oh, my favorite coral, Nicole? Um, Oculina annularis, probably, almost certainly. Or staghorn. Or pillar coral. That's a, don't ask me that question. This is gonna get weird if you ask me that question. I'm just gonna list off 1,200 corals names. So we can leave it at that. Don't ask me what my favorite coral is. I hope you guys learned a bunch and I hope to see you tomorrow at 2 p.m. Bye.